What's up guys, it's Ryan again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we've got a brand new video series coming out where we're going to be reviewing the SSI Deep Diver Program. And we really hope this video and all the videos in this series helps you prepare for your final exam during your course. Now please do not use this video nor any of the videos in this series to go out and deep dive. Make sure you're seeking out proper training from your local SSI deep diving instructor. So with that being said, let's do a deep dive into the SSI deep water program. Now the first part of chapter one that we're going to talk about is your actual scuba gear and typically speaking the gear that you use during your open water program is going to be good say down to a depth of about 60 feet. However, once we cross over into deep diving we may want to consider upgrading our gear so that it can hold say additional cylinders whether it's say a pony bottle or even a bailout bottle or we want to make it a little bit less say bulky up front so that we have total freedom of movement when we're underwater. Now if you're already diving a BC that's capable of that. Now let's look at our regulators. And typically speaking, most students will start out, say, on a piston unbalanced regulator, which are great regs. They're pretty much bulletproof and they will last a very long time. There's basically three working parts and they're super easy to service. However, since they're unbalanced, they do not breathe very well deeper than, say, about 60 feet. So you want to make sure that you're using some type of diaphragm regulator and something that's, say, even adjustable so that it's easier to breathe when you go to depth. Now, if that's the case, maybe you do already have, say, a diaphragm balanced regulator, you want to make sure that the hose routings are proper for it too. Typically, when we go deeper, there's a lot of other things that we're going to have clipped off to us, and we want to make sure that we're not creating any type of entanglement hazard. Your local SSI deep diving instructor will assist you by going over your equipment to see if it's going to be sufficient enough to go to deeper depths. Now, the next thing that you may want to consider doing is upgrading your exposure suit. Typically, in depths deeper than, say, 60 feet, you're more than likely going to experience some type of thermocline. Thermoclines are nothing more than just an abrupt temperature change in the water column. Now you may need to upgrade say from a 3 mil to a 5 mil or a 5 mil to a 7 mil or even go say from a 7 mil over to a dry suit. And if you're interested in dry suit diving, check out our review that we did on the SSI dry suit diving program. And check out the playlist down below as well where we did an entire series on dry suit diving from the different types of dry suits, how to don and doff them, and even how to use them and take care of them as well. We really think that video series will help you out as well. Now, with that being said, you may also need to add, say, a hood and a set of gloves to keep you warm and to help prevent blood shunting. Your local SSI deep diving instructor is going to assist you by going through your equipment to see if it's going to be sufficient enough for you to use during your deep diver program and to see if there's anything that you may want to upgrade as well. Now, some specialty type of items that you may want to consider taking with you, of course, are flashlights. Typically, in depths deeper than 60 feet, it can get pretty dark. Not only do we lose temperature, we also lose light. And I like to personally take two lights with me, so i got a primary and a backup as well. Now, a set of dive slates are great as well. It makes it easy to communicate, say, between you and your buddy. And you can also write your dive plan on there and even do your gas management as well. So the deeper you go, obviously, we know we're going to be breathing up more gas, and you may want to consider doing that gas management management plan even on the fly underwater. Now some other things that you might want to take with you is some type of diver tool. Typically say in shallow depths if you have a problem we can simply just come up and fix it but however at depth we can't necessarily do that. Once we've been down for a certain amount of time we're going to be required to do a safety stop on the way up so we may need to be able to fix things underwater. So a diver tool or even say just a small pouch with a couple little accessory items where you can fix equipment underwater is going to be very useful as well. Now of course we haven't really got into pony bottles and bailouts. We'll get into that a little bit later on in this video series. However, once again, we want to make sure our equipment is suitable to, say, sling a bottle or even attach it to our uh, cylinder on our back just so that we've got the extra equipment that we may need while deep diving. Now, the next part of chapter one we want to talk about is taking good care of your gear and making sure that you're getting it serviced on regular intervals. Whatever the manufacturer suggests, or if you use your equipment the way we do, maybe even a little bit sooner. Make sure you're getting it serviced by a trained technician, say from that gear manufacturer, and make sure that you're keeping it up to date as well. You never want to have a failure when it's underwater, and the best way to test it is to test it on land. So routinely go through your gear, make sure you don't have any leaks because a small little problem at the surface can be a major catastrophe down deep. So get it serviced, make sure it's in good working order before you attempt to go deep diving using your scuba gear. 
Now, the last part of chapter one that we're going to talk about is surface support and why it's so very important that we have proper surface support when we're making deep dives, whether you're diving from shore or say you're even diving off a vessel. Now, typically off a vessel, a surface support personnel can assist you getting in and out of the water. They can even lower gear down to you. Maybe you are slinging a bottle and you don't want to jump in with it. They can actually hand it down to you. They can also lower a line to do, say, a safety stop. Maybe it's a hang bar or they can throw a line out behind the boat as a reference line or even a say a tagline behind the vessel as well. They're also going to be there to assist if you have an emergency, they can call for help. Maybe you send up an emergency buoy or something like that. They can actually read that note, whatever's on that buoy, and call for help. They can also assist, say, if you're caught in a current. Maybe as you come up, you're doing your safety stop. As you get drugged by the current, they can follow along with you, whether they're following your bubbles or, say, even your SMB that you deployed at depth. Now, your surface support can also help with emergency communications, whether it's, say, through a cell phone or emergency radio. There's also going to be an accident management plan on board that can be put in place by that surface support personnel. So they are a vital role in you staying safe while deep diving. Now, a couple of final things to think about is always have some type of first aid kit and O2 kit available. Typically speaking, deeper dives, you're going to be on gassing a lot more nitrogen and decompression sickness is a real thing that we must consider. Another great thing for deep dives is look at the SSI Nitrox diving program because it's going to assist you in not storing as much nitrogen when you go down. Now, that being said, if you want to see the review of the SSI Nitrox program, click this link up here or check out the link down in the description. We've got an entire playlist list on nitrox as well and we really think it'll help you prepare to make deep dives. There you go, guys. That's going to do it for chapter one in our series of the SSI Deep Diver Program. We really hope this video and the entire series helps prepare you for your SSI Deep Diver Final Exam. But please do not use this video nor any of the videos in the series to go out and deep dive. Make sure you're seeking out proper training from your local SSI Deep Diving Instructor. That's going to do it for video one. Definitely stay tuned. We've got four more videos in this series, and we really think it's going to be educational to you. So until our next, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.